Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Houdini tutorial. Today we're going to have a look at how to create a helix and then distribute geometry along all the points on the helix and scale them according to their proximity to other points. So the first thing we'll do is create a geo node and dive in there. Then we want to create a circle. The circle needs to be a polygon and we want it to be an open arc and that's just going to give us the um, sort of exterior band of it. Then we'll rotate it 90 degrees so it's sitting on the ground and we'll increase its divisions to 50 so it's a bit rounder. And we'll just turn on points so we can see what we're working with here. Next we're going to displace this the circle so the end point of it is up by a fraction and um, it sort of gradually gets higher as it goes along each point. So we're going to use a um, attribute expression for that. Just plug the circle into there and we'll call this helix and the expression is self plus set and we're just setting um, its um, offset based on its at point number um, and we'll just multiply that and this is uh, going to be by however much you want so I'll use point I use 0.5 just as an example and then so that's on the y-axis and then on the z-axis is zero. Oh, so if I set, I actually type it incorrectly. So at 0.5 it's quite long um, so we can make it quite um, 0.01 maybe maybe 0.02 yeah and you can adjust that as you want um, but we'll just use that as a starting point. Now to create the helix you could actually go in here uh, back to the circle and just change its arc angles to like 720 degrees um, or as many rotations as you want, 1080 for example and you're just going to create more and more um, rotations of the circle. Uh, however what I found was when I was applying geometry to the, um, the finalized mesh when you are using um, more than a 360 degree arc um, you get random rotations or sort of what appears to be random rotations of the geometry being applied. So we're going to keep that at 360 degrees and we're just going to use a copy transform. And then what we'll do is just um, make a copy and um, trans translate it upwards by its, its own height. So we will just grab the bounding box on the Y uh, translation and we want the bounding box of the height from the previous node so we're going to look look for um, helix uh, quotation look for helix and then comma and then d underscore y size so we're moving it by its y size its axis on the sorry its size on the y axis uh, and then we just need to look at the copy so there we go you can see it increasing in size uh, so we'll just use two uh, copies for now and what we'll do is put in a poly wire and plug that in there and have a look and what you'll find is your poly wire will have this break between each copy so to fix that we'll create a poly path and plug that in between then we want to connect endpoints and they'll fix that issue so back to the poly wire um, I'm going to just go off some um, sizes that I went uh, that I found when I was uh, testing this out. So the wire radius is using 0.32, um, and the divisions was 10. Uh, and actually, the circle radius was um, 0.4 from memory. Looks a bit funny, but we'll see how we go. Then I think we're going to need more points and more polys, so we'll just subdivide that. And that will give us a bit more. So I might go back to that radius of one. Yeah, that does look better. All right, so after our subdivision, what we can do is we can actually put a smooth in, which will relax those points a little bit. So we'll get a little bit more square on the inside, um, and the outside's pretty good already. It's not, it's not super, super important, but um, it just does look a little bit nicer when you do it this way. And the last thing we need is normals. And they need to be point normals. So our points. So when we copy to our points, the 
the objects that we copy are going to be facing the correct direction. So I'll show you what it looks like before we do a couple of extra things. I'm just going to grab a file um, that I've created previously. Uh, because I'm basing this on the, um, the cover to the, the most recent tool album, um, it's using an eye and it's sort of, um, it's repasting it along a helix. So far as I can tell, it looks like a helix. Um, and I've just made a quick edit to that and just transformed it. The transform's not actually necessary and I've packed it. I'm gonna take that pack off because it can be an issue if you um, grab a pack from another um, scene file and, and reinterpret it. So I'm just gonna redo that one once I connect it. So I'm gonna do a copy two points. and points go in there, geometry goes in there, and that's what we get. So, you know, you could do a pretty easy scale. Um, you get something that looks like this, and it's, it's okay, it's not great though. What we really wanna see is if we look at our um, mesh, is that we actually want points in the center of each polygon as well. Um, just to get some more interesting distribution and get these concentric sort of circles that occur. So um, what we'll do is we'll use a divide there and um, we just want to dual compute that and basically what that's going to do is um, put a point in between all of our um, uh, in the center of each polygon and then we can just remerge the original back into it. Like so. Oh, and uh, you need to turn off convex polygons. So if we turn our points on, you'll see that we get points at the center of the mesh. Um, you could actually delete the, the mesh here. I guess you could just use an add um, here and you could delete geometry but keep points. And then you get that if you just want to tidy it up a bit. And then you get your eyes like that, but because we've got this extra divide node in, we'd need normals. Yeah. Okay, so we'll turn those points off so we can see what we're working with. So you can see even now, we're not scaling yet, so the, the ones on the outside are sort of further apart than the ones on the inside. But you can see that just by adding that point in the center, um, yeah, you do get that nice sort of pattern happening where you get these sort of off concentric circles happening. Uh, particularly on this helix, it's actually quite a nice piece of geometry to use for this, but you can use anything, uh, which I'll show you um, toward the end. So we've got our geometry on our helix. So now we need to adjust the p-scale of each point. So um, it is um, based on the proximity to the next point. So we're going to use an at wrangle for that. And we're going to put that here. Okay, so what I've done is I've just pasted in the, the VEX um, from the from the file that I was working with earlier. Um, rather than just typing it all out, I'll just quickly explain what I'm doing. So I'm just, if you have a look in the um, geometry spreadsheet, you can see that I'm getting uh, a near point and a P scale. I'm um, assigning it to each point. And then we're um, dividing those, uh, the P scale, is just the distance divided by two, um, or times 0.5 if you wanna look at it that way. Um, and what that means is if you go up to your geometry input, you may have to adjust the transform size because it's obviously just a division. But once you get it to the point where your geometry is, the size that you want it in relation to the, uh, the other size, so if you want them to slightly overlap or you want there to be a bit of a gap, or just sort of touching, which is sort of what I'm going for there. Um, it doesn't matter where you are on the mesh, relative um, to each other, they're always gonna be just touching at that sort of side, as you can see there. So then when you look at the mesh, you can see that regardless of whether we're looking at the outside, which had, um, which would have been smaller, um, there would have been more space between each copied um, piece of geometry now they're scaled up slightly and then you can just pack the geometry so it's a little bit lighter on your scene and you can do all sorts of stuff um, with that and then the last thing that you want to do with this well it's up to you whether you do or not but um, you can merge the 
original geometry back in with the um, copied geometry. So we're just going to use a merge node, chuck it there, and put the eyes there, and then we'll just go up to the um, helix and stick it there. So then now you get that base that the uh, eyes can sit on. Um, so one interesting thing that I found, regardless of what geometry you, you end up using, if you've got a sort of a, a bunch of tries heading into a central point, like an anchor point, um, you will end up with this random larger eye. Um, you can delete that if you want to group it. You can just select the point, create, create a group, and then delete it at the end of your, your point chain, sort of under, um, probably before the attribute wrangle. Um, it doesn't, it's sort of up to you whether you want to do it. And then you can assign this to all sorts of geometry. So, you know, you've got your spheres um, and you get, like like I said, more concentric circles. Um, and then that's more of a um, uniform sphere. Um, you can even assign the geometry to its own geometry. And then you can just sort of get like weird, I guess, a semi-fractal thing happening there. Um, and yeah, it'll work with most geometry. Um, obviously, if you get things like non-manifold non might, might act weird. Um, and anything that's a bit too crazy in the way of like you can see here there's quite a bit of space between the outside ring of those eyes and their center one and that's just because it's it's converging to a tri. It does work best with quads so bear that in mind depending on what geometry you want to use with it and also the um, also the mesh that you're applying um, a circle is going to work obviously nicely because it's going to appear close and even on all sides whereas if you use a square or something like that a diamond it might be a bit offset you can always rotate as well and your transform i could just you know rotate that 22 degrees and then all the eyes are at a slight um, angle and you can always different patterns and you know you could use something a lot more complex or a lot more simple than that and uh, get a different result so yeah, patrons this week obviously will get the scene file and um, the geometry and then we'll have a sort of um, bonus tutorial with some shading and stuff and lighting that we can do if you guys are looking to um, get into that. That will happen at the $5 tier this month. So um, if you do join the Patreon, you will obviously get all the scene file and attributes for this tutorial and um, all others and all previous. So consider joining up. That's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, make sure you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week, just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord, and more by clicking the link below.